that's when you realize it could work when the sound goes in there. But up until that point, no fingernails left. There's a lot of uh, swapping senses in this film. Like, for example, instead of hearing footsteps or hearing the breath, you kind of just see it, which is really, really interesting. So how did you create this really unique approach to the film? Um, well, there's so many, here's the, <laughs> it's, I don't know if it's a hidden secret, but one of the things about being a director is you're really just taking credit for hundreds of people's work. So many people contribute to the making of a film. And then of course, I'm sitting here doing the publicity, but but people like Will Files is the sound mixer. Will is a really um, esteemed sound mixer in Los Angeles. He's done some huge movies. We were lucky enough to get him for this. He and I had a great time with the sound design and like um, mixing it, like you said, in a counterintuitive way, like you would hear things you were supposed to see and see things yeah. you were supposed to hear. So I would say it's all about utilizing talented people. That's what it's, I can't take credit for it. It's really about the cinematographer, the sound mixer, and all these crew members that they make it what it is. Working with a lot of geniuses then. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Lee, you've gone from acting in horror films and to directing your own. So how do you um, sort of create the sense of horror and dread? Um, it's a hard thing to do, as, as Jason will attest. It's cause, because the thing is, it doesn't feel dreadful and horrific on the set because you have a hundred people standing around and there's a craft service table over there. What you have to do is hope that once it gets into a dark room months and months later, you get it to that point. But when you're shooting on the set, it's, it can be quite nerve wracking because you're like, this doesn't feel scary at all. Yeah. This feels really tepid. Um, the power of sound design, the sound mixing stage is always where I'm the happiest during the making of a film because that's when you suddenly realize, especially with a horror movie, that's when you realize it could work when the sound goes in there. But up until that point, no fingernails left. Fix it in post. Yeah. yeah. So you both you both must have understood the sensitivity of, of approaching a story so centered around, you know, the abuse of women. So why did you think that horror was was the right way to approach this particular story? Um, I don't think it really happens like that. Um, I don't think either one of us set out to make a story about abuse and then landed on the Invisible Man. I think we what really what we landed on the Invisible Man, and then Lee started thinking about it, and Lee came up with this story. And I think Lee, like all kind of great artists, is affected by what's happening now in the world. So in during the creative process, you can speak to it better than I can. I think I think that has an impact, and so that Invisible Man became about that, mm. but it happened that way as opposed to the other way around, as opposed to thinking of a topic and then creating a movie around that topic. Mm. I was always trying to guess where the Invisible Man was in the shot, and it was, That's it was good. really That's interesting good. to watch. Um, and so, so how did you create horror when it was invisible on the screen? Because I know sound was very much involved, but is, is there any other tricks? I mean, there's no tricks to it. That's what's frustrating. I wish there was. I wish there was a manual that you could consult. Like I do yeah. too. Yeah, excuse me, guys. Uh, take five. Then a Chapter lot of, five. And a lot of directors could do it. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are only about ten, eight directors who can do scary really well like Lee. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I feel like I learned from the best watching James Wan. I feel like James Wan has a really rigorous approach to scares. He never wants to take the easy way out. He knows that the audience expects A and he wants to give them B. Um, where they least expect it. And he's constantly out faking. And so I think I absorbed a lot from watching him work. Um, and so it's, but it's never, <laughs> it's never easy. And it's never, every time you go up to bat, you feel like you're gonna miss. Like, oh, this one's gonna be a strike. Like it just, it's just, it, it's, it's never like, oh, I've got it sorted out now. Now I know what to do. Yeah. Um, it's always like, oh God, what if this doesn't work? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you gotta, you gotta fail to. Yes, exactly. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So what do you love about the cinema experience then? Just in general. About going to movie yeah, theaters? Yeah, going to the cinema. What do I, I really love and what distinguishes it now in a very different way than even did 10 years ago is yeah. it's the, it's one of the few places you can go where you don't, you're not, you don't have access to your phone. You're not supposed to look at your phone, <laughs> yeah. which I think is really good. I think everything, anything do. that we do on television or streaming, I, everyone's half watching the thing and half watching their phone. Yeah. So I think one of the, the magical things about the cinematic experience, besides the fact it's collective, you're in a dark room, is that people are really focused 
on the work you're putting out there. Now yeah. that sounds, you know, kind of obnoxious as the people who create the work, but you want people focused on what you did. Well, let me ask you this. This keeps happening. I, I don't want to interview. Why you're such a forward thinking person who's into the next thing and cinema is such a viewed as such an antiquated sure. thing. So it's why true. do you, what's your, why is there such a love for it there considering you're such a forward thinking person? Well, I do because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't dislike I don't dislike television. It's just very different. That's all. We yeah. make we make TV too, but I think cinema. It's a magical. It's a magical experience. Yeah, because you're out of your own comfort zone. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. special. I mean, for me, it's a lot of nostalgia. To this day, the smell of popcorn takes me right back to being a kid. Like being my kid, my mum yeah. taking me to see Ghostbusters at the Waverly Gardens Twin Cinema. Shout out to Waverly Gardens. Because, and, and that smell, and like, it was a magical, that very 80s movie theater look, you know, they always had the red carpet. It was always red, the whole thing was red. Yeah, yeah. And it was, you had to go down a set of stairs. I remember that stuff like it was yesterday. And, and, and that's why I still love movie theaters, because they just remind me of being a kid again and, and having these great experiences.